Hello again, cellos. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about the, the blue belt and the red belt together. And again, because there's, there are similar uh, technical things that we have to do. And the blue belt actually is not, that, is not too difficult. So um, the red belt sort of uh, expands upon it. To do these uh, belts, the, to do the songs involved with them, um, you will have, or I will have put on some tapes on your cello, and if I haven't, then um, obviously the next lesson is make sure that I do. But if not, um, you might be able to see them here. I have, in addition to the red one, I now have a yellow one, a green one, and then the blue one you have before. So if the red was first finger and the blue was fourth finger, obviously these are for the two middle fingers, or two fingers in between, so that uh, the yellow is your middle finger and your green is your third or your, your ring finger. So the first one is, is the hot cross buns, cold cross buns. Now the thing about these, these tapes and the reason why we leave them, I leave them uh, in, in this method a little bit later, is because we tend to use one or the other. So we don't, I mean, in the red belt, we're going to see that it's possible to use them both in the same song. But uh, for, for the most part, we usually skip over one, or you know, depending on, on what the pattern is. So if I'm on, for example, the D string doing hot cross buns, hot cross buns is not like going three fingers, two fingers, one finger. It's not a countdown. That wouldn't sound like hot cross bun. Right? We're going to get to that kind of sound uh, in red belt. But in blue belt, hot cross buns, the, the green, skip the second finger. In other words, just drop right to the red and then open. So it's almost as if the yellow finger doesn't exist. Okay, or the, the, the middle finger, the yellow tape doesn't exist. Green, red, open. And all of the hot cross buns on all of the strings you're going to play them on, you're going to do them on three strings, all have that pattern. Green, red, open, whatever string you're on. And there's, so the rest is just remembering the song. We have uh, twice that we come, we say we come down the notes. It's going to feel like you're going up uh, on the actual cello, but the sounds themselves are coming down for hot cross buns. <laughs> strings, so open D in this case, and then red, and then one more time. Okay, so that whole thing put together, cold cross buns makes it like the green never existed it uses the the yellow so now we're yellow red and the open string so two one and open this one's a little bit more like just counting down When I'm using the green for hot cross buns, I do have all the other two fingers above it, but I don't put my pinky down because I, then I then I would hear only the blue, I, and I don't want that. I want I want to hear the green. Um, when I'm using the yellow for cold cross buns, I do keep my first finger down because I want to get used to feeling that above there. It's not completely necessary, but I I do end up playing at the very next note, so I might as well have it there, right? So some a lot of times it's about preparing your fingers in advance to keep it down there. So you're just playing the first note, then lifting a finger, or in the case of hot cross buns, playing the first note and then lifting two fingers. If I do the same thing on the uh, A string, same color pattern, hot cross buns. <laughs> I'm still trying to keep really straight bows, get that nice sound. And it might not be 100% perfectly straight, but I'm trying to do my very best to keep it level going across. We want to remember that that's what's going to help give, give us a really good sound. I'm also very aware of where my bow hold is. I'm not letting it get anything other than 
you know, than what it should be, where it's hanging, hanging down from my, my, in my fingers, not the fingertips, but the fingers themselves from my wrist. So the last hot cross buns would be on the G string. So we come over to the third string from the left, you know, all dogs go. We're not going to do it on the, on the C string, but not this, not this particular bell. Here's hot cross. <laughs> Now, in the previous uh, cello video, I talked about how how much bow I use on any given note. You notice for the the this the words would be the one a penny, two a penny, the faster notes. I use a very small amount of bow so that I can change it quicker. If I try to use a lot of bow on those, and I can, but it's just going to be really tiring. So it's not necessary. Uh, there are times when I might, you know, need to do that for effect. But if I don't have to, I won't, right? I mean, if it's a faster note, I'm just going to use less bow, so it'll move quicker. Okay, so that is hot cross buns, cold cross buns. As I said, it's not not that difficult. Actually, a lot of uh, my students find purple belt harder than blue belt. And so I said, well, why would it be in that order? Well, it's the how the skills are introduced. And I think that actually uh, putting them in this order makes it a little easier uh, than if it were in reverse anyway. Okay, in red belt, we are going to use all four colors here. In fact, we use uh, more of the, the tapes, the, the fingers, than we do even open strings. There's really only one open string in the entire thing. So this is a, a, a song I came up with called Tumbleweeds. And I, I came up with that because I wanted something that did use all four notes. So if I put my four fingers down, let's, again, I'm going to start on the D string. You're going to end up doing this on all four strings separately, uh, so you get used to doing it. But as you, just like hot cross buns, cold cross buns, it stays on the same string the entire time that you're, you're playing through that particular uh, song. So it's not like Old MacDonald or um, in the Purple Belt, the Sky Boat song, where it changes partway through the string. Right? It stays on the same string. So the reason I call it tumbleweeds is because this, this little thing that happens at the end of every line it just reminded me a lot of cowboy music. Like, and, and I just picture the words, you know, tumbling down. So when I, I eventually came up with some words uh, to it that make it a little bit more more interesting, you know, and they're always tumbling down, rumbling down, you know, it all have that little kind of um, rhythmic falling quality, da, 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 little uh, little bit of drama, I suppose. Um, but uh, the the patterns are again, we're looking at patterns. Mostly, we have a lot of things on the on the red, and so the first line, red, red, blue, red, then yellow, and then blue. Here's that first, we call this a triplet, by the way, and then it does the same thing, then yellow, blue, here's the triplet. Triplet again, red, yellow, the only open note, and red, one more triplet. So one thing in this to practice, because you don't have to memorize the whole, you know, the whole thing, but the thing you want to practice so that you know you can do a little bit better is that triplet. And we always add the the next note to it. Uh, because the triplet really doesn't finish uh, the this feeling of fast notes. Triplet is simply a group of three notes. You know, um, you know people can have be triplets if they're you know, three people born at the same time to the same parents, right? It's like uh, uh, you can have twins, you can have triplets, etc. So a triplet of music is simply a group of three, three faster notes. Everything else is nice and long notes. And the speed I'm playing at might be a little faster than what you want to do, but as long as the triplet is faster than the long notes, you know, and, and we like to try to keep it, um, you know, at a certain amount faster, in this case three times faster because it's a triplet, 
then uh, then you know then we have the right rhythm. So as I do this on the A string again, you know every string is going to have the same color pattern. Uh, I'm going to play it at a slightly different tempo so you can hear how it might sound slower, how it might sound a little faster, etc. So the A string I'm going to play a little slower just just so you hear it, and we're still going to listen for those triplets. <laughs> Stuff like how do I make sure that the triplet is going to be three times as fast? Well, what I do when I'm playing the longer notes, I'm counting in threes. So as I do this on the G string, I'm just slightly faster, but uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to count out loud here how I'm counting. So I think to myself, how fast do I want to play the fast notes? Bum, 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 bum. Maybe about that fast. One, two, three. And then I'm going to use the number one on the last one. Um, uh, and now notice the numbers that I'm counting are not the, in fact, they're the opposite order of the, the numbers of my fingers. So one is your fourth finger, two is your third, like it's gonna be a little confusing. So I'm actually gonna count, uh, when I get to the triplet part, I'm gonna use the fingering numbers, okay? So when I'm on the, on the longer notes, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? Because if I start using fingering numbers when I'm just counting for time, uh, it's going to throw me off. But if I if I do time numbers when I'm count when I'm remembering fingerings, it gets a little harder. Okay, and I know I know it's, there's no easy way to do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so in the, on the G string, it sounds like this, and I'm going to count out loud in time. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. To, to do this, I have one more string I get to do, so I have I can show you one more variation to keeping time in it. Is if the numbering throws you off, going back and forth between the two, you could try this. One of the other musical forms that uses this group of three notes a lot is a waltz, and uh, the way waltzes are performed is usually this feeling of. So if I have that kind of feeling to it. And I'm going to say it out loud because that way you get to hear it, and that way it's captured on video for the entire world to see me uh, singing it. Uh, but if you're thinking it, you're feeling it, right? Just like we do in in the general music class, you know, say it, mouth it, think it, feel it. Uh, it it will help you a lot, right? Because we we don't play notes randomly and hope that they just end at the right time. We have to have some sense of of when that's going to happen. So I'm actually going to be thinking in that mm pa pa. Mm.
notice I didn't do it when I was doing the faster notes because I didn't really need it. Those notes are moving at that speed. And also it might, you know, I mean, I could possibly do it, but it, for you, it might throw you off. And if it's, a little, if it's difficult to do that, to coordinate saying the rhythm while you're playing, I mean, it's something we want to develop over time. But if that, if that th uh, kind of throws you off a little bit, have someone else help, help you with it. Right? Have someone else sit there beside you going, mm, pa, pa, mm, or even... Right? It's exactly the same thing. There's a downbeat, two, upbeat, down, up, one, two, like that. And that will help you keep time. Okay? And metronomes can, uh, can help also, uh, but it's sometimes more fun to have someone else there uh, with you to help you. Okay? Thank you very much. I hope this helps.